Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today I'm gonna be showing you how to create a info box graphic in Adobe Premiere Pro. So basically the end result is gonna look something like this. Let me go ahead and put this back into fit and then make it full screen. And so basically what we're doing here is we're creating like this pop-up box that comes up like so. And so we're doing it all within Premiere. This is sort of like something you could definitely do in After Effects pretty easily, but I'm gonna be showing you how to do it completely in Premiere. So let's go ahead and create ourselves a new sequence by going up to File, New, and then Sequence. And we're just gonna click OK and we're gonna drag our footage in and make it reset it for us. So let's go over here. Let's click on our footage and let's drag it on over. And then we'll change the sequence settings and we'll zoom our sequence in. And so the next thing we need to do is we need to start actually building our uh, box that comes up in the middle. So what we need to do is we should go over into the tools right here. Let's go into the graphics workspace first. So go up here to the uh, these buttons and go into the graphics workspace. This is just, it isn't essential, but it will help you. So once we're here, we're going to go down to here in the tools and we're going to hold on this because the pen tool might be open. So we're going to hold and we're going to select the rectangle tool. Now we're gonna click and we're going to drag ourselves a rectangle like so. Most likely your rectangle is going to look like this when you drag it. So once you create it, what you wanna do is you wanna click on the graphic, then you wanna to go to this one and you want to click on it. And it'll be named shape one. We're gonna name it outline in a second. So now what you wanna do is you wanna go down to here to the, the fill and we're going to take the fill and we're gonna uncheck the fill box and then we're going to check the stroke box and then we're going to bring this up to somewhere around the 20s or you can make it less or more this is really your preference you see you're just making a bigger or smaller stroke here and then you can change it to whatever color you want as well so now i'm going to go ahead and change the name up here and this is always a process to actually get it to let me rename it so first off let's let's go ahead and click on it and hit Control c Control v to duplicate it and once we have the duplicated copy what we can actually do is okay i'm just gonna have to review i'm gonna right click on this and hit rename because <laughs> double clicking is not working so i'm gonna right click on it hit rename we're gonna name the top one um border and then we're going to rename the bottom one background like so and now what we're going to do is we're going to take the bottom one that is the background and we're going to undo the stroke redo the fill but we're going to turn it to black like so and the reason that we're doing the background in a separate sort of layer within this graphic is because now we can lower the opacity down. So it's just slightly dimming the background like so. If we had done them, uh, if we had used this fill, we'd also be dimming the stroke, which is not what we want to do. So now that we have it down to 58 ish right here, we have this nice little sort of dimmed background. What we're going to do is we're going to move on over into our graphic right here. And we are going to go ahead and animate this forward. So we're going to go in here, we're going to go over to our effects on the left over here, open up the effects panel, and then we're going to go ahead and look for an effect called transform, one of my favorite effects and one that I use quite often. And you also have to spell it correctly. Um, it's under video effects, distort, and then transform right here. We're going to click on that. We're going to drop it on our graphic. Now, there are going to be a lot of pseudo transforms in here, meaning there are going to be a lot of ways you can accidentally make a mistake here. So we don't want to use the traditional motion up here. So make sure that this is dropped down. We don't want to use any of the position or scale within the graphic itself. We're going to drop down this one, drop down the time remapping, drop down the shape and the other shape as well, because you'll notice these both have transforms. And then now we're in the transform effect, and that's the one we want to use. So you can see if we bring the scale down, it's going to bring it down to zero. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's start it here and let's move this to a point where the shot is stable. Uh, there's a little bit of like when you click the button and it bounces uh, when you start recording. So I just want to make this as stable as possible. And then now let's animate this forward by going maybe one, two, three, four, five, maybe six forward. And we're going to go ahead and take the, actually we need to go ahead. And, first off, we need to click on the graphic and click on the scale button, the uh, toggle animation button right here to make it a keyframed animation. Then we need to go about forward about five. And we're going to make this not 100, but about 120 or actually 115. What this is going to do is going to make it slightly too large. Then we're going to go forward two and we're going to bring it back down to 100. And this is just sort of like a little neat tip to make your animations look cleaner and a little bit more sort of fluid and dynamic is to make them not perfect. So in this situation, it actually bounces over and then comes back. So you can see that it has that little bounce to it. And then if we actually click on the one right here and we ease this one in, we'll actually get a neat little effect right here. It'll 
look really, really smooth and nice. And we can make it look even smoother by going over here once again into this transform tab, unchecking use constant position shutter, and then increasing the shutter here. And that's going to add in our motion blur like so. So get to a point where it's motion blurring and then just sort of adjust this to where you want the motion blur to be. So right there looks good. And then now it looks really, really fluid like so. So now we have the basis of our animation. Let's go ahead and affect the shot itself. So let's click on our shot and we're gonna go over here into the effects and we're going to look for something called brightness and contrast under video effects color correction. It'll be right here called brightness and contrast. We're gonna click on that file or that uh, effect and then we're going to drag it onto our footage right over here. And once it's on, you'll see that it's just a very simple effect. It's exactly what it says. It has brightness and it has contrast. So what we wanna do is we want to go ahead and check the toggle animation on our brightness and through the course of our animation, so it coming up and then setting, we want the brightness to dim down so to focus our attention more on the text. So you can see it starts off bright and when it comes up, it's gonna actually lower the brightness just a little bit to accent our text. And the other thing we wanna do is we wanna add a little bit of blur onto the background as well. So let's go into blur. And then we're going to go down under video effects, blur and sharpen. And we're gonna look for the camera blur. You can use really any of these, but the camera blur is gonna look the most natural because it's gonna look like the camera might generate the blur, which is kind of what we want because we're focusing on something in the foreground. So we want the background to look like it was blurred or bokeh or you know any of the, the natural techniques we could create. So we'll drag that and drop it on here. And you see that's way too big right at the start. So we're actually gonna hit this at zero and do the exact same thing we've been doing. We'll toggle the animation. We'll move to the animation's end, which is right here about seven frames in. And we'll just bring it up just a little bit, maybe, maybe up to about seven right there. And so now you see that the background suddenly becomes just that, a background. And now our attention is focused on this box right here. And so now what we need to do is we need to just finish this off by adding the text. So let's go ahead and go and click on the graphics tab. Let's go to a point where it's the box is here so we know what we're creating here. And let's create a text box that starts from the top left up here and let's drag it downward. We need to make sure not to click um, on that. And you'll see that it, my computer is actually lagging just a little bit and that's because we have a lot of blur and stuff happening at this moment, but we'll just push through it. And then we can write anything, June 15th, uh, 2029 by Adobe Masters. You know, really anything you want. You can make this an informational fact or an intro title. It just, it works with anything. It's just going to be centered on your text. We're gonna highlight this text right here. We're gonna go over to the essential graphics panel, make sure it's selected. Then we're gonna go down here and we're gonna center this text to make it look all nice. And I'm going with Minion Pro and Bold Condensed here. And then I'm just going to adjust it into the center of the frame. There aren't really any guides to help you with this. So you kind of just have to eyeball it. Maybe a couple more, whoops, that's not the button I wanted to click. Maybe a couple more pixels down. Maybe one more back to the right, click off of it. That looks pretty good right there. And let's go ahead and I think it should have a comma in it right here. Yeah, sure. And so yeah, now that's looking pretty good. And so now what we wanna do is we want to animate this. And you'll notice something. This is a part of this effect, but it's not being animated. Why isn't it being scaled like the rest of the effect is? And that's because over here, order matters. So you'll see that we have the transform tool above the text, the next addition within our graphics uh, graphic right here is the transform is actually above it. If we drop the transform below it, what will, what will happen is that everything will come in at the exact same time because now everything above it is being affected by the transform. And if this is the way that you wanna bring it in, so be it, it's a great sort of animation to bring the text in all together at once. However, if we wanna animate the text separately, we can take the transform, we can drag and drop it up one, and now the text will be independent and it will not be affected by this transform. So another little sort of benefit of using the transform effect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into a point where it is just about done, so maybe right there, and we're going to click on our text, uh, our graphic, make sure that we are under our text right here, it'll say text and then parentheses, whatever the text is. Then we're gonna go down into the opacity. We're going to click the toggle animation. We're gonna start it off at zero and move maybe four frames forward and bring it up to 100. And that just gives us this clean sort of uh, fade in appearance. And then so that is basically going to be it for the effect. Now you have this sort of dialogue box that comes up 
and it has some text that you can read. The background is nice and blurred out, so we are focused on the text right here. And it's also darkened, so again, our focus is centered right here. To really end the effect, what we have to do is we have to um, reverse everything. So we have to take this entire effect and reverse it so that the effects are reversed and it goes back down and we can look at our footage again. And so to do that is pretty simple. All we have to do is just reverse all the keyframes we created, which can get a little tedious, but it has to be done. So we're going to go ahead and do exactly that. We're going to take these two on the end here. I'm going to hit Control C, Control V, and I'm going to drag this one slightly over one or two keyframes. And then we'll take this one, Control C, Control V, and move it over. And what this is doing is now it's going to go bigger and then shrink back down like before. And then once that goes down, we need to get to the beginning of this animation right here. So let's use the arrow key to jump to this keyframe. Then make sure that we're perfectly on it. Then we're going to click on to the um, the footage itself. We're going to click this button right here, add a remove keyframe on both of these effects so that a new keyframe is added. Then we're going to move forward until the animation ends right about there. And we're going to go ahead and bring these back to their original values, which is zero here, and which is zero here as well. And so now we have most of this undone. Now all we have to do is undo the text itself. So we'll go again back to where this starts. And right when the animation starts to go away, we'll start reducing or um, yeah, we'll start reducing the opacity here. So we'll do the exact same thing, we'll hit add or remove keyframe, move forward five, or probably a little bit less, maybe four, and bring it down to zero, like so. And now you'll see that it comes in, and then it disappears. So you'll see that it's blurry, and then right when the animation starts, it comes back and we're back to this original footage. And that is how you create an information dialogue in Adobe Premiere Pro. Thanks everyone for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and throw them in the comments section below or on our website at adobemasters.net in the forum section there. If you want to see more videos similar to this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I make a video every other day on Adobe-related content, sort of focusing on the video realm. And until next time, guys, see ya.